Hey there, this is Will Marshall, and I'm at the offices of Pyramine in San Francisco, where I'm currently artist in residence, putting together a short video explaining how the new post fader effects routing in Tractor Pro 2 works. And this is a feature that was added, I think, in 2.6, which came out a few months ago. And it's something people have been asking for for uh, quite a while. It was a feature that was commonly found on older effects units, especially um, analog gear with send return um, loops. And it's very useful, so we're kind of happy that Tractor has added this. So to start with, I'll show you how to uh, turn the effects on, how to enable them. I'll walk through the differences between pre- and post-fader effects. And then I'll give you a couple of demonstrations of creative applications of uh, the post-fader effects. So to turn them on, we'll go into our preferences. We'll go into the effects section here. You can see we've got this FX unit routing section here. Now we've got three options in the drop-downs. Send, which we're not going to talk about here. Insert, which could equally well be called... Uh, pre-fader effects, and then the last one, the new post-fader. So I'll start by demonstrating to you how an insert effect sounds and how that interacts with the channel fader. Um, so this here is a track of mine called Blush Response, which is coming out soon on Broken Robot Records. Um, and uh, if you see knobs and things moving on the screen, that's because I have a couple of bits of hardware plugged in front of me, just so that I can manipulate things in Tractor more easily. So don't get too confused if, if things seem to magically happen without me doing anything on screen. We've got a uh, FX, um, the granular phase effect, plugged into FX bus here. It's on, the dry wet is at 0%, and it's switched on to a decay. So if we start playing, and we bring up the level there, You can hear that if we stop the track, that granular phase effect kind of decays away, echoes away kind of gracefully. However, if we bring it in, and we uh, stop the track by closing the fader, which obviously means the track is still playing in the background, which can be quite useful, you can hear that the effect basically gets muted. The fader actually turns down the output of the effect. However, if we go into the uh, FX unit routing and we switch to post fader effects like so, then if we do the same thing, we can hear that as we turn down the fader, the effect is still allowed to play out. It's allowed to decay away gracefully. Now, this basically means that when you've got pre uh, fader effects turned on, that fader is turning up and down the output of the effect. And when you've got post-fader effects turned on, the uh, fader is turning up and down the input to the effect. So when you turn that fader off, no more audio is being sent to that effect, but any uh, sound that is still coming out of the effect is allowed to play naturally. Now, you might ask, you know, why does this matter when I could just stop the track by, instead of closing the fader? Stopping the track obviously stops the play here. It means that the track is no longer playing. Whereas if you leave the black track playing in the background, you could say, mute the track for one bar. Not an elegant example, but you can hear you could mute the track briefly by cutting it out with the fader, and the effect would still be able to take place. So some creative applications of this. Um, one of the common ones I use, and I'll give you, I've kind of given you a demonstration of that, but I'll, I'll run into this a little more, is kind of ways of stopping or finishing a track rapidly or cutting them out for a brief period with the effect. So we're going to turn the dry wet down to zero. I'm going to close it for now. Bring up the air track. One, two, three, four, one, two. So you can hear we uh, turn up the effect and then we close the fader and everything fades out quite nicely. Now, something else I like to do creatively with uh, post fader effects is actually uh, layer the an affected, just the affected version of a track with something like a delay or a reverb in with the original track. So to do that, what we're gonna do is enable a uh, mode here, which is in the loading section of uh, Tractor. And there's a setting here called Duplicate Deck When Loading Same Track. And what this does is if I'm, say, playing a track on Deck A, like so, and if I load that track into Deck B, B the same track, um, the settings in Deck A, so the speed and the position in which it's playing, will automatically be copied across. So I instantly get two duplicates of the same playing track on either side of my mixer, which is very handy. Now, what we're going to do is turn off the effect here, and turn down the dry wet just on principle. So this here is just the dry version of the track. And on this side, we've got a delay plug in here, 
The dry wet is at 100% and it's on. The FX2 is here. So all we have is the uh, delayed version of it. Then we're gonna turn up this filter here a little bit just to take the uh, low frequencies out. So we've got the delay and the original and we can mix them together. So you could hear there I had the track playing on deck A and I was using the fader on deck B to cut in and out this delay on some of the notes, say, some of the snare hits and some of those little beeping noises and the breaks there without having to um, uh, do the entire thing at once and without having the downside of turning up the, uh, the dry wet control like this. Um, if I was just playing one deck at once would obviously turn down the original volume. So having duplicates like this allows you to do really precise kind of edits and fixes to uh, or changes. This is really useful when you're doing something like minimal techno or some house and things like that where being able to use an effect to pick out a specific sound and emphasize that gives you a lot of uh, potential for interesting creative results. So obviously um, there's a lot more you can do with post fader effects. Uh, there's certainly um, a lot of interesting things that can happen with them that simply can't happen with pre fader effects and generally obviously I have my effects just set to post fader now. By default, I think it's a much more useful mode. So have a play around and see what you can come up with and enjoy. Thank you. Very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool and until I came here for the first time, I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do, and especially in electronic music. Since since coming to Pyramind, I, I've discovered electronic music, and you know, San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me, and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail. We, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really helped me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is of course everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.